Hey, welcome to this week's quick tip. This week, we're discussing the very basics of automation. Now, automation does exactly what it says. It allows us to automate certain functionality inside the software. Instead of using two hands to control a Cubase project, we can draw in a whole lot of different automation data, which will mean that we can have as many hands as we want controlling the software. I wanted something simple to demonstrate the automation process, so I'm using a pattern inside of GrooveAgent 4. I've dragged it across into the GrooveAgent track. Now I've found the individual instrument parts that the pattern is controlling, and I'm right mouse clicking to assign individual outputs, so they will all have their own unique channel in the mixer. To activate these outputs that I've just set, I go to the right hand side of Racks, and I activate the channels that I want to use. Now to show the automation, I go to the triangle on the bottom left of the instrument and click on it. Now I'm naming these individual outputs. If I solo the first one, which is the snare, you can hear the snare. Now the phrase and the toms. I've separated these individual drum components and now I can start automating the individual parts. Let's start with very basic automation, a fade in. I'm entering two dots using the arrow tool. Now I can pick up on that first dot, drag it up, and I've got the perfect fade in. In this current setting, the automation is going from point to point in a perfect line. To delete an automation point, you click on it and hit delete, or you can draw a box around a series of automation points and hit delete. If a perfect line's not what you're after, grab your pen and free draw in as many automation points as you want. At any point in time, you can change the automation just by drawing over the top of it. You'll notice that on the left hand side, the fader moves according to the automation point. You can use your undo tool to undo any mistakes that you've made. There are two key types of automation, ramp and jump. We've been using ramp to draw continuous changes for things like volume. For simple on and off automation, we use jump mode, which only allows us two different parameters, on and off. Automation is not just about drawing fancy art all over the project window. We can also go to the mix console and click on the right button down the bottom of the channel, hit play and use faders and encoders to automate different functions inside of the software. I've automated a volume change by moving the fader and now I'm using the panner to pan from left to right and back again. Now as it cycles back to one in the project, I can move my mouse away and these changes are repeated. I could move on to another channel and start automating another channel, but if I go back to the project window, right mouse click on the track and select show used automation data, you can see the automation data that I've just recorded and I could edit that further using the pen. Back over in the mix console, I'm still in write mode, but I've opened up my EQ and I'm sweeping an EQ point around and around. Because I'm in write mode, Cubase is recording this automation data and back in my project window, I can right mouse click and say show used automation. Now I can see all of the automation data I've just recorded. To avoid making any mistakes by bumping a fader, I'm disengaging the write mode by clicking on the W button. Now you can see we're locked in to that automation data that we've already written. By taking the read button off, we're free to make any changes that we want and we haven't lost anything. You can still see that automation data there behind the main fader and we can engage it again by clicking on the R button. We can get even greater control over these automation points by using the arrow or object tool to draw a box around the automation points. Then there's smart controls or handles situated around the outside of this box, which we can use to make even smoother automation changes. You can pick up on the box using your mouse and drag it from left to right. At the moment, my movements are locked onto the grid, but if I turn the snap off, then I can move it about freely. You can also use the selector tool on the hand to drag automation data left and right. But at the moment, I'm holding down Alt or Option and I'm copying that automation data from those four bars and pasting them in another section. If you want to be more precise, then maybe you need to select the line tool where you can draw perfect lines in over the top of your automation data. The line tool also has its own menu. It's a little triangle below and we can select different modes and go and use those modes to further draw in automation data. At the moment, all of this automation data is for one channel. So you can imagine how crazy it must get 
for an entire project with loads of different tracks. Luckily, we've got the automation panel where we can go and choose what we want to see at any point in time. We can suspend the right on a number of different automation functions, and we can also go and suspend the read, which will mean the automation data is suspended and we can hear what it was like before we applied the automation. Going up to functions, we can delete all automation in a project or just on selected tracks. Now there's no used automation data left on that track. Next week, we're going to delve even further into the world of automation. Thanks for taking the time to stop by. I'll catch you then.